Um, all right, everyone's here with me. Lulu Garcia Navarro, can I start with you? I know you just spoke to the former House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, for your podcast, uh, breaking her silence on what happened here. She was, of course, instrumental in pushing Biden to step aside, right? I mean, let's be clear about that. So what's she saying now? Well, um, without giving too much away, she talked about the fact that this was a heartbreaking loss. She used that word. Mm. She also said that she has spoken to the vice president mm -hmm. and that it was a very emotional conversation, that they're friends, and that that conversation was difficult for both of them. Um, mm. We had a very wide-ranging and lengthy conversation about what happened, uh, how she sees the path forward, and what her own plans are. Um, and, you know, that will come out soon. But, you know, it is honestly a very, very difficult moment um, for the former Speaker of the House, uh, Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, absolutely. Van, so Nancy Pelosi using the word heartbreaking in her conversation with <clears throat> Lulu. Carville talking about a dark tunnel. Mm -hmm. Blame is starting. Yep. And um, there needs to be discussion yeah. among Democrats. So... <laughs> well, look, we, we spent a billion dollars and elected Donald Trump. Uh, that's not a blame game. That's called accountability. <laughs> um, yep. And the people at the top of the campaign, the top of the party, have a lot of people pissed off at them because there were people who were, had suggestions. There were people who were saying, why are we doing this? Why is it? it was like, hey, we've got it, we've got it, we've got it. We've got this special magical computer formulation. We've tested every ad. Shut up and sit down and go back to work. And so people said, okay, well, I guess you're right. And then we got clobbered, clocked, knocked down, beat up, drugged down. And yeah. so people are mad, and they should be mad. And the people at the top are going to have to listen. There is a grassroots rebellion happening in this, in, in this party, and it's coming to knock on the door of the people who are in charge of the party. That's not blame game. That's accountability. Accountability. I mean, and you know, I know you're a billion dollars. A billion dollars. And I dollars believe they too, technically, like uh, you know, blew a few hundred million of that in the recent weeks, Andrew Yang, and now ended up technically maybe in debt I'm, I, a little bit. Um, they did door knocking, they did traditional ads, but you heard what Van's saying. They, they weren't listening to other ideas that people maybe like Van had. Uh, for instance, Yes, well, I mean, th there should be accountability, and Joe Biden should not have run for a second term. There should have been a competitive primary in January. He should have dropped out in January and not July. And by the way, J.B. Prisker, Gavin Newsom, they should have challenged him in January. We all know that they had campaigns in waiting, but instead everyone said, oh, Joe's going to be fine, Joe's going to be fine. He has a disastrous debate against Donald Trump, and then he drops out in July, and then everything is under the gun and in hurry-up mode. The party lost a crucial period where they could have introduced the next generation of leaders to the American people, vetted and, and chosen a ticket that could have taken the fight to Donald Trump instead of Joe Biden fumbling the ball to Kamala down the stretch. And, and Lulu, to this, this whole conversation, is there any sense from people you're talking to of what role they think it played, that there was a perception certainly among some voters that at least Kamala Harris had not been honest with voters about Joe Biden's true state. I mean, this kept coming up again and again. Now people are trying to figure out, well, what happened? Is that something you hear? I mean, I think that one of the things that happened during this election is that when that disastrous debate with Joe Biden um, happened, I think there was a break um, in trust with um, the Democratic Party and the electorate, there was a feeling that there wasn't actually honesty about the condition of the president and that people had been perhaps shielding him from the voters. I mean, if you think about the fact that he really hadn't been sitting down for interviews, he hadn't been giving extended press conferences. And so I think that there is a, a real, you know, there are still questions about what exactly happened there and who knew what and when they knew it. Right. I mean, that is the real question. I mean, Van, I had done an interview with him a few weeks before that. I didn't know, you know, he was fine in that capacity. But you would imagine someone around him all the time, yeah. as many were, would have had a much different, perhaps, view. But, you know, it all came down to many, many things, right? But when you look at the actual votes, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't as if t Trump suddenly surged in so many things. Yes. It's that... Democrats did worse. Monmouth went through just the blue states. Trump got an extra 280,000 votes this time versus last time, so he improved. Yep, but this is not the story. Look at this full screen. Yeah, Harris lost 3,339,000 
404 votes. Yes. That's what stands out there. Well, you know, Bakari Seller said over and over again, it's either Kamala Harris or Donald Trump or the couch. And Bakari was always worried about the couch, people just not feeling inspired enough to go out and vote. He wasn't worried that people were going to not vote for Kamala and go vote for Trump. He was afraid they weren't going to vote at all. And here's how we got beat. We got beat because the Republicans and the conservatives built a different media system that had to do with online, had to do with podcasts, had to do with, with streaming platforms, and they were spending their money there. We were laughing at them and knocking on doors in Philadelphia and Detroit. It was like, there's no Trump people. They're not dropping literature. They're not dropping, dropping on, knocking on doors. Ha, well, in ha, fact, ha. It, was, it was laughing, like, oh, Elon Musk and Charlie Kirk, yeah. but their PACs we don't were, know what they're doing. We, they're were, making, that we were making fun of Donald Trump for having thrown away his ground game and doing some weird stuff online. We thought that they were, were idiots. It turned out we were the idiots. We woke up in a body bag because while we were knocking on doors, they were making these phones into 24-hour-a-day political weapons for themselves. And so we got outflanked, outplayed, outbeat by people who told us the whole time that they knew what they were doing, and people are mad. And Future, and, 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 uh, future Ford, all these different groups that vacuumed up all this money and told everybody to sit down and shut up are going to be in for an accountability session from the grassroots, and it is coming. I remember when you and I were speaking at one point earlier, you were talking about algorithms, all kinds of data that was available that, that you were, you know, people were going to be presenting to the yeah. Harris campaign. Sure. And I suppose you're going to say that that did that fall on deaf ears to large part? Yeah, Van, Van's right. They were like, you know, we've got it. We've got uh, it. And, and, and uh, they didn't have it. And one very obvious missed opportunity is that Joe Rogan has the biggest audience in the country. It's disaffected, low propensity men, kind of the audience that the Harris campaign should be trying to reach, it was much more upside than anything else. Kamala goes on, Tim Walls goes on, and then you have millions of, of men who are exposed to the Democratic message, and Never they happened. turned it down because she was too busy? I mean, like, that, that, that uh, it, it, it makes zero sense, except yeah. in the context that the, the team just didn't have confidence in her, her to do it, which it would be its own issue. Yeah. Unless you think he's being mean. 48 million views for the Rogan Trump interview on YouTube alone. Which was what, a three hour for, interview? A three hour interview with 48 <clears throat> million views. Like, mm -hmm. the, 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 they were laughing. Oh, the That's bro two thirds of the total number of votes that Harry. Yeah. yeah, so, so it's all one the debate, I think. Yeah, it, 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 it's like 41 million can I, can I jump debate? In here? Yeah. yeah, Lulu. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy that everyone's talking here about the information ecosystem. Obviously, it's incredibly important. So is Joe Rogan. But there is two issues here. One is the message, and the other is the messenger, and so um, and how those messages are delivered. And so, you know, there is a lot of discussion right now about the ground game and and how you reach voters and all these things. And I think that's going to be parsed. But you know, voters told the Democratic Party over and over and over again that their main issues were their pocketbooks, inflation, and immigration. And, and that was what they told them. And the closing message of the Democratic Party was democracy and Donald Trump is a bad man. Right. Well, but by, by is the there way, any way that, there's, that, the, that they could have won, though, with Kamala Harris with immigration on the issue, given that she was part of the Biden administration? But that was just never really defined. Yeah, so, so two things. Number one... If you were going to run Kamala, then she needs permission to break from Joe Biden and say, hey, look, whatever the administration did, like, I, you know, like, like, like I would have done things differently and we're going to go this uh, other direction. I mean, her, her uh, inability to do that was a very serious problem. I, uh, look, I, I, I don't know if it was winnable. There are two numbers. One is 39. The other is 75. Huh? 39 is the approval rate for Joe Biden. That's very low. Yep. And 75 is the wrong track measure. That's very high. So she had a tough hill to climb. I think that she did as well as you could possibly do. But she had a bunch of people running that campaign who did not listen, who were very arrogant, who sucked up a billion dollars, who pissed off a lot of people, and you're going to be hearing about it for a long time. A lot of people who had said they weren't going to donate another dollar if Biden didn't get out in July, mm -hmm. and then they opened up the floodgates, and they did give that money. January, they not July. You know, uh, uh, Joe Biden, <laughs> yeah. you know, I endorsed him in 2020, but he failed the George Washington test in passing the torch in time to have a, a real primary. All right. All of you, thank you very much. I appreciate it, as always.